So this morning, as we have the Holy Communion, I would like to uh, talk about Jesus Christ, the Bridegroom. Jesus Christ, the Bridegroom. And, the, and also, you know, we know that uh, Jesus Christ is the uh, main reason of conducting this Holy Communion, right? So Jesus Christ is the main reason of conducting this Holy Communion. So that's the reason uh, I was, uh, I mean, uh, just going through... Um, Psalm number 45, verse 2, and also um, Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 1. So let us all prayerfully sit in the presence of God, and we are going to listen to the word of God from, um, especially from Psalm number 45, verse 2, and also Song of Solomon, chapter 2, uh, verse 1. And uh, the, the title that which we are going to see uh, today is that uh, the marvelous beauty of Jesus the bridegroom. The marvelous beauty of Jesus the bridegroom. And also we will be thinking about Jesus the rose of Sharon and the lily of the valley. Jesus the rose of Sharon and the lily of the valley. Okay, basically on uh, Psalm number 45 verse 2 it says like this. You are fairer than the sons of men. Grace is poured upon your lips. Therefore... God has blessed you forever. And Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 1. I am the rose of Sharon, the lily of the valleys. So when we go through this verse, particularly these verses, we understand that our, who is our Lord Jesus Christ and what are the specialities of our Lord Jesus Christ and how the psalmist and uh, Solomon is explaining or describing about Lord Jesus Christ and uh, what is the relationship that we have with our bridegroom. Amen? So that is what we are going to see that this morning time and I already uh, requested our worship team to sing one song uh, in English uh, right after my message that is Jesus is fairest of 10,000 to my soul and he is the lily of the valley. Amen. What is the Malayalam for that? You know? It's a, it's a beautiful song. I, I already requested them to sing that song and which talks about uh, the, the greatness of Jesus Christ. Amen. So the Malayalam is Yeshu uh, and Thorene Kande. Can you sing that song now? Yeshu and Thorene Kande Elikella Mayavani Padina Irengelil Yetam Sundarane Sharonin Pani Nir Pushpam Avane Yan Kandati Padina Irengelil Yetam Sundarane Tumbam Dukangaladil Ashwasam Nalgunnon Yen Paramellam Chumakam in Netavan Sharon in Pani Nir Pushpam Avane and Kandati Padina Irang Elil Yetam Sundarane Padina Irang Elil Yetam Sundarane Hallelujah. A Padina Irang Elil Yetam Sundarna, a Christuane, numbered a Sundarish, the Vice Sigiri can Kartanam Kauser and Tano. Hallelujah. He is the fairest of ten thousand. To my soul. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is fairest of 10,000 to my soul. So this morning, I would like to describe about the beauty of Jesus Christ. The beauty of Jesus Christ. We will go to Song of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 10. But there we are reading in Song of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 10, we are reading, My beloved is radiant and reddish, outstanding among the 10,000. Hallelujah. You know, when we see that word, we need to understand, 
you know even in psalm number 45 verse i mean two uh, psalm number 45 verse 2 also we read that jesus uh, or the, the the bridegroom is i mean i mean a beauty and he's handsome he is handsome. Okay? So when we go through that portion, we should understand that, you know, this is not talking about the uh, outward appearance of Jesus Christ. Okay? So in outwardly, when you look into Jesus, you, you can see that uh, Jesus Christ is just a, I mean, Jewish guy. Okay? So outward appearance, Jesus Christ is just a Jewish guy, just like you and, and me. Okay, at the same time, when we look into the inner beauty of Jesus Christ, amen, or the, the spiritual beauty of Jesus Christ that we are reading there, you know, the inner beauty is explaining that it is more than the physical beauty of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You know, we all are beauty and we all are handsome. At the same time, when you think about, you know, sometimes uh, the people are saying, you know, I know Jesus uh, in the picture. Okay, and uh, by seeing that picture of Jesus Christ and uh, by seeing the uh, 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 video or by seeing the film of Jesus Christ, we are saying that, okay, oh, Jesus is so handsome. No, it's not described here that the Bible very clearly says that, you know, it is not describing about the physical appearance of Jesus Christ or the beauty of Jesus Christ, but it is the inner beauty of Jesus Christ. The inner beauty of Jesus Christ. That means, you know, it's a, we are reading in that Psalm number 45 verse 1, uh, 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 verse 2, that you are fairer than the sons of men. And grace is poured upon your lips. Therefore God has blessed you forever. I mean, so we are thinking about and we are describing about Jesus Christ. And not because of the picturized I mean, Jesus Christ. You know, it is actually, you know, when you see the, uh, the, the videos or the I mean, film about Jesus Christ. Uh, it is only, you know, the, the actor is acting and the actor is I mean, standing there uh, in, in, instead of Jesus Christ. Okay? It is not the real Jesus Christ. Okay? So you cannot say that oh, Jesus Christ is outwardly in appear, uh, uh, outward appearance of Jesus is beauty. Or Jesus is handsome. We cannot say that. But we understand inwardly or inside Jesus spiritually the inner beauty is explainable. Hallelujah. And that is what we are seeing in uh, uh, Psalm number 45 verse 2 that he is handsome. Jesus is handsome. That means he is fairer than the sons of man. He is fairer than the sons of man. That means he was conceived in the womb of Mary through Holy Spirit and he was conceived in holiness. You can see the holiness of Jesus Christ even when he was conceived in the womb of I mean, Mary, the mother. And again, in his, uh, in his birth, he, in, even in Galatians chapter 4 verse 4, we are reading that I mean, his birth was I mean, in a perfect time. In a perfect time. So that also shows that Jesus Christ was handsome and Jesus Christ was perfectly the son of God. Hallelujah. And also we understand that he was born in the fullness of time. And Okay. In uh, Ecclesiastes that we are reading that uh, I mean there is a time for everything, right? There is a time for everything. And even there was a time which was prophetically written in the Old Testament prophetical books about Jesus Christ that this is the time that Jesus is going to born. Hallelujah. And his public ministry, he was attracted to him. Many people were attracted to him. And his transfiguration time, his face was like a sun. That means many people were amazed about the beauty of Jesus Christ. And even in his agony, while he was hanging on the cross of Calvary, he proved that he is the son of God. And also on his resurrection, we see that perfectly beauty of Jesus Christ at the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's, that's the reason after the resurrection, while he was ascending to heaven, you know, the men of Galilee, they were just standing there. They were looking into the sky. And they were just looking at the sky and saying, Oh, oh our, our Lord Jesus Christ is bright and bright and bright. And we cannot look it there. And uh, the angel comes and says, Okay, the, the Jesus, I mean, whom you see that uh, he is ascending to heaven, he will be coming back uh, in the same manner. Hallelujah. So that's the reason we can say that Jesus Christ in his birth, when, while he was conceived in the womb of mother, 
in his birth and also in the public ministry and also in the agony on the cross of Calvary and he was going through the tough situation. He was showing that he is handsome in body. He was handsome in inside. inside. That means the inner beauty is revealed to the people of God while he was going through the struggles in his life. Even in his resurrection. Even in his ascension that we see that he was handsome and he was revealing that Jesus Christ is the son of God. Jesus Christ is the son of God and he is handsome. Again, in the second thing, uh, in, in the second point that we understand in uh, Psalm number 45 verse 2 that we are reading there, grace is poured upon his lips. Okay? The grace is poured upon his grace or, or his lips. That means the beauty of Jesus Christ that we see is not the outward appearance, but exactly we understand the beauty was coming out of him. The, the beauty was coming from inside. Men, through his words, through his lips, hallelujah. You know, and we understand, thirdly, we understand in Luke chapter 4 verse 22, Luke chapter 4 verse 22 we read that uh, all were speaking well of him and wondering at the gracious words which were f falling from his lips. Amen? So Jesus when he was talking you know the gracious words were coming out of his mouth. So that is the reason in Luke chapter 4 verses 22 we are reading we were speaking well of him and wondering at the gracious words which were falling from the lips of Jesus Christ. Amen. That means while he was talking you know the gracious words were coming out of his I mean out of his lips. And even we understand that the gra the, the word of grace I mean, whenever he was talking, even in uh, Matthew chapters uh, 5, 6 and 7, we understand, uh, I mean, uh, whenever in you know, the, the Mount Sermon, that we understand that Jesus was talking and talking and talking, many people were attracted to him and many people were following him. Only because the words that which was coming from out of his mouth was gracious I mean, words. Even in Luke chapter 4 verse 22, that's the reason that we are reading that, uh, that uh, the, the, the gracious words uh, were overflowing from his mouth. The gracious words were overflowing from his I mean, words. That's the reason in John chapter 7 verses 45 and 46 uh, we understand he had the power and the authority in his words. When Jesus had the power and the authority in his lips. Hallelujah. Especially you know the authorities uh, were sending soldiers to I mean, arrest him. In that particular verses we understand. And uh, they came back, uh, I mean maybe empty, empty handed. And the chief priests and the Pharisees were asking that why did you not bring him to us? And, and, and they, were asking, they were answering in uh, verse 46 that never did a man speak a way this man speaks. He managed in samsari kendo the bore. Where are in samsari chengla kete tila. Never a man speaks like this as Jesus is speaking. That's the reason that we were not able to catch him. You know, the people were going, the soldiers were going to arrest him. But these people are saying we could not arrest him. Because, I mean, he was speaking the gracious words to the people and all the people were surrounding him and all the people were following him and we cannot catch him out of those people. Hallelujah. And that is the speciality and that is a description that we are getting from that verse that, uh, I mean, the words of Jesus Christ was gracious and graceful. Hallelujah. And that is the reason that we are praising the name of Jesus today. Hallelujah, hallelujah, not because of the outward appearance of Jesus Christ, not because of the outward I mean, beauty of Jesus Christ, not because Jesus was I mean, outwardly handsome, but because of I mean, the spiritual I mean, handsome, the spiritual beauty of Jesus Christ that we are seeing inside Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Again, when we go to Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 1. You know, that, that is a, that's the main point and, uh, and the next point also is very important to us to I mean, think about all those things. And, uh, you know, the fourth thing is that, uh, which is we, we are reading in Song of Solomon chapter 2 verse 1. Can you read that verse maybe in Malayalam and in English? Ah. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. 
Okay, so what is that verse? It says that Jesus is the rose of Sharon. The rose of Sharon. The particularly it is written Sharon. So Jesus is a rose. Okay, Okay, so what is the Sharon mentioned there? The Sharon is the place which is mentioned in the Bible in different places, especially in Isaiah, book of Isaiah, in 1 Chronicles and Song of Solomon many times. And it talks about the fruitful land. Okay, Sharon is the fruitful land in the Bible. And also it is famous for roses. Okay, Sharon is the fruitful land and also it is famous for roses. That means, you know, when the, 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 uh, when Jesus was in heaven, you know, we read that uh, Jesus was there in heaven and he, he took the form of a man and came down to this earth. And we are saying that okay, when Jesus was in heaven, it was actually a land of fruitfulness. Okay? And when he came down to this earth, we understand from that Sharon and from to this place, to this earth, okay, this earth was not a fruitful land. The earth was not suitable for the people of God. The earth was not suitable for Jesus Christ to live in, in this earth. Amen? But we understand when he was coming from that place, the fruitful place of heaven to this earth, okay, non-fruitful land, and we understand even in heaven he was fruitful. And on the earth also Jesus was fruitful for many people. That's the reason that we are calling him as the Rose of Sharon. I mean, he, he is coming from that place, the heavenly places, to this earth to provide the salvation for the people of God. Hallelujah. That's what we understand. And again, when we think about the Rose, what are the specialities of this Rose? Why it is mentioned in that particular verse about Rose as Jesus Christ? You know, it's a, it's a prophetical word which is written in the Old Testament. And we understand we will be able to describe about Jesus Christ, his spiritual beautiness, his spiritual, I mean, handsome. And we read that Rose is the loveliest and the sweetest flower. Rose is the loveliest and sweetest, I mean, I mean, flavor. And also the perfection in shape and color and in fragrance. Okay? The importance of the shape of the rose. We know that, you know, wherever, you know, in, in all, of our, all of our houses there are, I mean, rose uh, flowers are all, right? You know, we have the, the, the plants are there. In every, every house, most of the houses we have the, the, the plant of roses, okay? And we get uh, the, the flower uh, of rose also. You know, the, the speciality of the rose, when you say the rose, the rose is the perfection. The rose is the perfection. The rose is the perfection. And also the shape, and also the color, and the fragrance. I mean, in the rose, I mean, the rose is the rose. The rose is the rose. Okay, so these are the specialities that, you know, exactly it is given for Jesus Christ. And also, it's a universal flavor. Huh? What is the speciality of the rose flavor? It's a universal flavor. What is the meaning of that? I mean, even if, if the rose is the universal flavor, we understand when we are comparing Jesus with that rose, I mean, Jesus is available to everyone in every nation. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You know, everywhere you go, in every country, in every nation, you will see the rose. And Jesus also is omnipresent everywhere. Hallelujah. Jesus is omnipresent and Jesus is everywhere. I mean, every people, those who are living in every country, they need Jesus Christ. Without Jesus they cannot live in this world. Amen. Without accepting Jesus, they cannot live in this world. Amen. As the rose, the flower law, rose is the I mean, I mean universal flower. We understand that Jesus Christ is a universal person and he is there everywhere in this world. Every land is belongs to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And again. When you see that uh, the same verse, uh, Song of Solomon chapter 2 verse 1, we understand it's written, he is the lily of the valley. He is the lily of the valley. Next one. Yeah. He is the lily of the valley. What is the meaning of that? You know, lily is a sweet and fragrant flower with a strong aroma. Hmm? 
flower on or a push from another lily in the world. Okay, and even when we think about that, we understand Jesus through his sacrificial death, he became the fragrant aroma to God. Amen. As the, the flower of lily is producing a fragrant aroma to the people. When Jesus was dying on the cross of Calvary, because that's the reason that we are, I mean, having the Holy Communion this morning time, and we are going to observe that Holy Communion. We have to understand that Jesus, when he was going through the sacrificial death, when he was crucified on the cross of Calvary, when he was breaking his body, and when he was shedding his blood on the cross of Calvary, we understand it was for the people of God and for the glory of the, the Father God. Because he was, I mean, showing that aroma. And he was showing that fragrant of aroma to the people of God. And it was a blessing. That's the reason in Ephesians chapter 5 verse 2 that we are reading that Christ also loved you and gave himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice to God as a fragrant aroma. Hallelujah. So on the cross of Calvary, what did Jesus did? We understand in Ephesians chapter 5 verse 2, Christ also loved you. Okay, So Christ, Jesus Christ is loving every person and he gave himself for us as an offering. He gave himself as an offering and as a sacrifice to God as a fragrant aroma. That means when he was dying on the cross of Calvary, he was pleasing Father God, and he was pleasing and providing the salvation for all the people, those who were living in this wretched world. Hallelujah. Thank you, Master. That's the reason that we are celebrating the Holy Communion, because Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary, he offered himself, he sacrificed himself, and he is saying that, I'm dying for you. Amen. I am offering myself for you. I am offering myself for you. I am offering myself for you. I am offering myself for Hallelujah. Why can't we just remember the death of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary that he died for every one of us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the next speciality of the lily is lily is white and it is beautiful. The flower lily is white and beautiful. That means white is a picture of purity and holiness. Okay? That means you know, Jesus Christ everywhere he is representing the purity. Okay? Wherever he was going and whatever he was doing everywhere we see the holiness of Jesus Christ. Okay? We read in the uh, uh, in, in book of Leviticus that uh, I mean, uh, uh, God said uh, uh, be holy because I am holy. Be holy because I am holy. Even Jesus also is saying that even on his public ministry, you know, he had many chances to do sin. And he had many opportunities to, I mean, go into this world and uh, enjoying the worldly pleasures. But we understand being the 100% man and 100% God. I mean, Jesus was not doing any sin in this world, but he was overcoming all the temptation. Hallelujah. That's the reason that when Satan was, uh, I, mean, I mean, tempting him. Okay, after, the, after the fasting prayer, when uh, Satan was tempting him, during the temptation of Jesus Christ, uh, I mean, he was uh, uttering the word of God. And he was saying, no, I will not, uh, I mean, I will not do this, whatever you are saying. But I am ready to overcome the temptation of Satan. Hallelujah. So that's the reason that we understand rose is a flavor which shows and which represents the, the purity and the holiness of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And that holiness that we see in Jesus Christ during the public ministry of Jesus Christ. Amen. That's the reason it is written in Hebrews chapter 7 verse 26. Hebrews chapter 7 verse 26 says that for it was fitting for us to have such a high priest, holy, innocent, undefiled, separated from sinners. What a beautiful word it is. Amen? Can God say this same verse from about us? Amen? Sometimes, no? Sometimes, you know? About Jesus Christ, the word of God says that. I mean, especially the writer of the book of Hebrews, he says that, for it was fitting for us to have such a high priest. Hallelujah. Itrim Manokarama Irikina Nalla Vishutana Irikina or Maha Purokidene Deva Namakwendi Tariga in Lula are the fitting I the Namakwendi. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ only was the person 
who was fitting enough to give his life because he was totally sinless. Hallelujah. He was totally sinless. That is the reason that it is particularly written for it was fitting for us to have just such a high priest. You know, somebody was saying, you know, Father, Son and the Holy Spirit, they had a, I mean, uh, uh, I mean uh, they, 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 had a, they had a discussion, uh, uh, the terrible discussion in heaven and they were just I mean, discussing who will go to, uh, go to the earth uh, to, to save the, save the Russian people. Then Jesus Christ himself said, I am ready. Jesus said, I am ready. I will go and I will die. I will live there and I will show what is, the, what, is, what is a man and I will show them what is God and what are the specialities of God and I will die. I am ready to die for the people. Hallelujah. That's what we are reading there. That for it was fitting for us. None other than Jesus Christ. I mean, there was nobody in this world to die for us. There was nobody in this world to, to, to sacrifice their, I mean, their, their life for, I mean, uh, for each, and each one of us. But it was only Jesus Christ he sacrificed. We are reading that he was holy and he was innocent. He was undefiled and he was separated from sinners. How can we say that Jesus Christ was I mean, separated from sinners? We read that again, wherever he was uh, seeing the sin, sinful people, when I mean, he was approaching them and he was sharing with those people. I mean, he was always with the sinning sin people. Right? He was always with the, 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 the I mean, uh, defiled people. I mean, but at the same time, he was separating himself from sinners. We have to understand one thing. Even though he was having the fellowship or even though he was having the, the, the conversation with the sinful people, he was keeping a distance. He was keeping a distance. That he must be knowing that that uh, I mean I am the man of I'm, I'm I'm the son of God. I'm the son of man, and I should be keeping myself from the sinful people. We are we are supposed to con I mean have the conversation with the people, the sinful people. We are supposed to talk to them. But at the same time, Jesus is giving us a I mean very I mean good example that we are supposed to be separated from the sinners. That means we are not supposed to mingle with them. We are not supposed to join with the sinful people. That's the reason we are calling them uh, about Jesus that he was holy, he was innocent, and he was undefiled, and he was separated from sinners. Again, what is the next I mean speciality of the flower of lily? It is lily is very fruitful. Amen? Lily is very fruitful. What do you mean by that? You know, it, it, it is said that one root may produce 50 bulbs. Hmm? One root of the lily flower may produce 50 bulbs. Okay? That means, through the death of and uh, death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, many are saved. Okay? One root of the lily is enough to produce 50 bulb which means you know we understand you know uh, Jesus Christ on the on, on the cross of Calvary and Jesus Christ when he was uh, I mean doing his public ministry we understand when through the death of Jesus Christ and through the resurrection of Jesus Christ many of the people were added into the kingdom of God many of the people were added into the kingdom of God and many of the people were getting and receiving the salvation and the eternal life hallelujah that's the reason in John chapter 12 verse 24 John chapter 12 verse 24 that we are reading that Jesus said truly truly I say to you unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies it remain alone but if it does it bears much fruit Man, or Godam Bumani, Nilatovena, Chagan the Langila Dino, Verde Irikino, Tiny Irikino, Nala the Chatu Angelo, Valor of Falankaikino. That means you know, Jesus Christ was fallen down from heaven. Okay? Jesus Christ was fallen down from heaven. That's the reason it says that truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it is dying, which will bear more fruits. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Is it Karthava? Namukwendi, Itana Pumile Karangi Vana, if it a Vita Patavanaita, Maricha, in Mani Nada Ilaki Poya Gundana, Namal Mekartavane Aradi Kisurikyokache another. Hallelujah. Amen. We are praising God and we are singing God and uh, singing and glorifying the name of the Lord this morning time. The reason that uh, I mean, that wheat, the grain, was fallen into this earth. 
Hallelujah. And that's the reason that we are, I mean, I mean praising the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He, he, fall, he was fallen from heaven to this earth. Hallelujah. And he was broken for every one of us. I mean, he, he shed his blood on the cross of Calvary for each one of us. Hallelujah. That's what uh, we are reading in that particular verse that uh, I mean, if it is, I mean, standing alone, there is no fruits. But if it is dying, if it is dying, that Jesus died on the cross for you and me. That's the reason that he is producing more fruits. He is producing more fruits and many, many, many people, I mean, over the, over the centuries, many of the people are added into the kingdom of God. I mean, every day, many of the people are added into the kingdom of God. Every day, every moment, I mean, many of the people are accepting Jesus as their personal savior. Hallelujah. This morning also we have a wonderful chance to receive Jesus as your personal savior because he died for you. Hallelujah. Jesus was dying for you. Jesus was crucified on the cross of Calvary for you. Hallelujah. He shed his blood on the cross of Calvary for you. That's the reason the Bible very clearly says that when you accept Jesus as your personal savior, hallelujah, he is ready to receive you. And he is ready to, I mean, I mean, come to the heart of that person. And he is saying that I will be ruling over you. Hallelujah. Because we are taking him and we are receiving Jesus as our Lord. And our Lordship is given to the hands of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Then the Jesus is, I mean, leading us and guiding us. And the next one, the next speciality of this flower is, Lily is tallest of the flowers, but it hangs its head down. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. In, in that picture it was there, right? In the first one. Okay. You know, what is the speciality of the lily flower? Okay. It is the tallest one. It is the tallest one. The flower is the tallest one, but its head is always down. Its head is always down. What is the meaning of that? It's a, it's a, it's a great thing that we, we have to understand. You know, think about Jesus Christ. You know, Jesus Christ was greater than, you know, in the, in the book of Hebrews we are reading that Jesus Christ is greater than Moses. Jesus Christ is greater than the angels. Jesus Christ is, a, I mean, greater than all the leaders of the Old Testament bringing some of the people and saying that he is greater than all these people. Jesus is greater than all the angels. But we understand he humbled himself and on the cross of Calvary you can see that his head is hanging down. His head is hanging down. Have you ever seen that uh, picture on the, in, 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 in uh, somewhere else? You know, Jesus is on the cross of Calvary. How? The head is like this. Because he understands that even though Jesus is greater than the angels, even though Jesus is greater than all the Old Testament leaders and all the I mean, saints of Old Testament, we understand he came down and his humility is revealed in the act of Jesus Christ through the sacrificial death of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So what is the fatality of this uh, flower lily? You know, lily, even though it is tallest among all other flowers, amen, always its head is coming down. It's, I mean, hanging down. Head is always down. And even though, I mean, we understand that in Philippians chapter 2 verse 8, Philippians chapter 2 verse 8, where Paul is saying that, Jesus emptied himself and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even the death on the cross of Calvary. Remember one thing? That we understand as the lily flower is tallest and the heads down, we understand Jesus Christ, even though he was greater than every person, even though he was the greatest person, I mean, he was greater than all the people of this world. Hallelujah. He was ready to humble himself. He emptied himself. He emptied himself. He emptied himself. And also, he being found in appearance as a man. Even though Jesus was a God, Jesus 
was a God. He was emptying himself and he was leaving all the glory and honor in heaven and he was coming down just like a I mean, man. I mean, humility. The humility that we can see there. He humbled himself and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death. Maranathoolam. Avanandiyadu. Avanathannathalthi. Avaru maranathiyana namalanne. Jesus died on the cross until the but that means Jesus was obeying the Father God until the death, even to the death on the cross. Why? It is written separately there. It is written that uh, I mean uh, uh, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Okay? Eh? And that reason Ryamo. He was dying on the cross. That's true. No. He was dying for the, for the people of God. That is true. But it is written that he even death on the cross. That means the cross was given only for the cursed people. For the sinners, for the criminals and the cursed people. But we understand that Jesus was dying on the cross only because of you and me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And he was saying that, okay, I am dying for you. And I was, I mean, I, 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 he could have died, I mean, in a different way also. But it was written in the prophetical books of the Old Testament that we are reading that he is going to be crucified in front of the people. I mean, that is the, that is the main, I mean, important thing that we are reading that Jesus was supposed to be crucified on the cross. It was not a normal death. I mean, it was a crucifixion. That means, you know, only the cursed people, the criminals were supposed to be on the cross. But we understand Jesus Christ, he died on the cross. He was obedient to the Lord. He was obedient to the Lord. Hallelujah. And again, one more, one more thing that I would like to I mean, share with you about the lily flower. That is, I mean, the lily has many medicinal qualities. The lily has many medicinal qualities. That means it could be used to restore the lost voice and helps in faintness and good for the liver and also for the dropsy. You know, when this lily, the flower lily is used for the medicinal I mean, uh, purposes, we have to understand our Lord Jesus Christ himself was a physician, right? Our Lord Jesus Christ himself was a physician. And he was healing many of the I mean, sick people in this world. I mean, during his public ministry, I mean, wherever he was going, he was uh, I mean, healing the sick people. The reason was, I mean, he himself was a physician. He was a doctor. He was a doctor. That's the reason in Isaiah chapter 53 verse 5 we are reading, By his stripes we are healed. By his stripes we are healed. Hallelujah. I mean, they are dependent Hallelujah, hallelujah. This morning, let me tell you one thing. Hallelujah. Our Lord Jesus Christ is himself, he's a physician. And he is ready to heal the people, those who are in, uh, in sickness. Hallelujah. And even today also, hallelujah. If you are going through that situation of sickness or the illness, I mean, the Lord Jesus Christ is there and he is a medicinal quality, I mean, is, is able to heal you completely. Hallelujah. You know, let us all, I mean, summit us in the mighty hand of God. One thing I would like to I mean, share with you this morning, Tim, that, uh, I mean, you know, even though Jesus was handsome in his appearance, in his spiritual appearance, we understand in Isaiah chapter 52 and 53, we are reading that Jesus Christ was but Jesus Christ was crushed, right? And he was, I mean, I mean, uh, made on the cross of Calvary. Yeshu I mean, he became a formless person. And he became a shapeless person on the cross of Calvary. Even though he was handsome in Psalm number 50, sorry, 44, 5 verse 2. Hallelujah. We know that when I mean, Jesus was handsome. Amen. At the same time, he became, he became, he was, he was a lily of the valley. He was a rose of, uh, I mean, Sharon. But we understand uh, he died on the cross of Calvary for you and me. I would request uh, everyone to close your eyes in the presence of God. Hallelujah. We are going to just pray and uh, conclude our message this morning time. And we are going to, I mean, have the Holy Communion. Just before that. Uh,